Okay, this is part two of looking at data, deciding if it's exponential or linear, um, and then finding an equation if it's one or the other. So you can see over here that I'm looking at new data. This is different data, same x values as before, but you can see the y values are very, very different. Now, just because they're different doesn't mean it's automatically exponential. It might not be either. Um, but remember, the very first thing you do with data, when someone says, what kind of data is this? You graph it. So what I did is I went over to Desmos. You can see I just listed the points together. You can see I have the same, I don't even see any points, right? What's the problem? Well, the problem is this is my standard screen, like from minus 10 to 10 and minus six to six. Um, but Desmos fixes that for us. You can come way over to this little uh, magnifying glass, way over to the right. We click on it and there's our data. Um, definitely not linear, um, definitely could be exponential. We see, for example, that it's always concave up. It's got an asymptote um, going to the left. It looks like it's increasing, so I'm expecting a positive rate, a positive growth factor, a growth factor bigger than one. Um, but that's not a proof that it's exponential. If I want to prove it's exponential, I need to go back uh, to the actual data and do what we know what we're supposed to do. Now, if this was linear, I kept taking each y value and subtracting the previous one. And if it was linear, I got constant. That's not how exponential data works. The way exponential data works is you keep multiplying by the growth factor each time, by the same growth factor each time. Well, how am I supposed to check to see if I have the same growth factor? By taking each y value and dividing by the previous y value. So I'm just gonna type in a little equals here. I'm gonna click on one of the y values. I'm gonna put a little dividing sign. I'm gonna click on the previous y value and I get for that particular thing, the growth factor looks like 1.37-ish. Now what I wanna make sure is that we get exactly the same or really close for every single one of those. So I wanna drag this down like we did before and I'm gonna go like this. Come on, we do this all the way down. Yay, and the answer is, look at that, <clears throat> yes. Not linear, definitely, definitely exponential data. Um, now with exponential data, we have a completely different kind of equation. Um, I can use any of these points. Now with linear, it doesn't seem to matter which points you pick. You're always gonna get the same kind of answer. Um, I wanna pick the nicest points I can. Um, so I picked minus one, 1,003, blah, 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 and six and three, five, nine, five, blah, blah, blah. And we'll just see what we can do uh, as we go along. I'll have to probably come back and forth and do some calculations, but we're taking our time, so here we go. So what I wanna do is change cameras and go over to the little whiteboard and see what we can do. Let's see, I think it's right there, yay. Now what do I want? I have one point on my exponential graph, I have another point on my exponential graph, and I want an equation of the form a times b to the x. Now remember how this works. What we're supposed to do is plug in minus one for x and we're gonna get the 1003 blah 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 for an answer. And when I plug in the six in for x, I'm going to get the 3595 point blah 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 as an answer. So we're gonna get two equations. Let's write it down the two equations and we'll just see what we can do. I'm going to get y, so I get 1003.41666 is equal to a times b, right, which I don't know, to the minus one, like that. And the second equation I'm going to get is going to be 3595. Let's see here, point four two three 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 four equals a times b to the sixth. Now what we did yesterday first is we took um, equation two and divided by equation one. Let's get the right hand side first. When I take a times b to the sixth divided by a times b to the minus one, you get b to the seventh. Now when I take 3595 divided by 4 point blah blah blah, yes, what I'm going to get, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to let, I'm going to let Excel do this. So hold on one second. Yeah, well, yeah. Actually, I'm going to use my calculator. It's quicker. So I'm gonna get three, five, nine, five, 
0.423334 divided by 1003.416667 and my calculator says I get 3.583 so I'll try to go way over here 3.583 180-79841. So I'll put as many things as I can here. Now I'm supposed to solve for B, so I need to take the seventh root of both sides. So let's just write it this way. Let's take the seventh, come on, seventh root. Seventh root of this side. Remember, taking the seventh root is raising to the one seventh. I'm going to go like this. And I'll let my calculator give me the answer again. I'm thinking I should get one point something. We'll see. Oh boy, I got one point one nine 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 two. Um, yeah. Um, what that's going to give us is B is actually a nice number. It's just one point two. I like that. Now, finally, we need to find A, and to find A, I have to plug back into equation. One say, what do I want here, right? If I look at equation one, um, what I need to do is to solve for A, it's just to multiply both sides by B. So I'm gonna get 1003.416667 and multiply by my really nice B, which is just 1.2. And we're going to get, let's see here, what am I gonna get? times 1,003, nope, clear. I want 1.2 times 1,003.416667, and I get this, I get 1,204. Point. One, oh, 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 okay, it's just gonna be one. <laughs> All right, um, let's put our little conclusion. Let's go to the top. Um, maybe we can put this in pink, right? I'm going to write down that Y, I can do this, I think. Y equals A, which is 1,204.1 times 1.2 to the X. And we're all done.